pregnancy has occurred. And there's the shape of it. We're talking billions of years in order to make this. We're not talking millions, billions of years. No, nonsense. Earth God is what we're talking about. Who knows this verse? Very good, very good. Dick McDonald in the back row. Ten points for the back row. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Pride is the number one enemy of God, amen? He is greater than us. We need to be humble. Battle of the Immune System, part two. Uh, I heard a creationist, his name was Joe Francis, a biochemist. He taught us that when the woman's uterus would not want something implanting into it, her immune system would fight it. Biochemist taught us that in the localized part where the attachment occurs, the immune system of the female is turned off. From my reading, we still don't know why yet, but some chemical turns off the immune system so the woman's body doesn't reject it. And of course, you know what happens after birth. Guess. It turns back on. Amen? Great, great God. If the woman's uterus rejected it, none of us would be here today. Okay? True or false? After implantation, the cells of the baby do not get bigger. They simply increase in number. That's true. I got that from the true grid. Uh, movie yet. Okay. <laughs> Just more and more and more cells, okay? This is an easy one. What are the X and Y? Yes, back row. Um, what she said. Pardon? The right, chromosomes. Which one's the male? Y. Very good. Sperm cells come in two types, male and female. Now some have an X chromosome, which will result in a female, and some carry a Y that will result in a male. Okay? Now I've heard and have read that the Y are faster swimmers, but the X are stronger swimmers. They have more endurance. But isn't it amazing how it's pretty close to 50%? What a great guy. So there's my buddy. Well, how does the X and the Y chromosome work? Once again, something an evolutionist could not possibly begin to answer uh, logically. Two weeks after conception, the embryos look identical. Okay? And there are parts that they identify as gonads. Two weeks after fertilization, once again, they look identical. But if the baby has the Y chromosome, it secretes a factor that begins turning those gonads. Instead of them not turning into ovaries, they will turn into testes. Follow me? So the Y factor causes all these incredible changes. And they're not minor changes, significantly differences, all because of this one chromosome, the Y chromosome. And then the testes start secreting hormones to produce the male equipment. Okay? So the Y factor makes the testes and that makes it. How many people's heads are about to burst? <laughs> okay, it's what a great God. It's in the shame that medical schools can't give a little glory to God, isn't it? I'm sure many doctors do, but the professors don't want to be sued, so they don't touch on it. If there is no Y chromosome, the embryo happily proceeds to become female. Okay? You shall not dread them, for the Lord your God is in your midst, altogether. Great and awesome God. Isn't it funny how we try to get words to describe God? Like Paul said, words can't describe heaven. Great and awesome, not even close to what fits. There's a baboon for you. How in the world did all that marvelous chemistry evolve? The chromosomes, the types, the signals, the factors. Take a guess, shout it up. Which one? Who says hand? Who says foot? Who doesn't care? You don't care. Uh. There's eight weeks. The hand. Isn't that precious? Little 12 week old hand. Beautiful. I've heard that males have shorter index fingers than ring fingers. You guys heard that? So it's probably a male. But it's not 100%, so don't freak out if you don't. Know, now, again, 
Befriend the atheists. Don't fight with them. Share love and truth with them. I love this verse. I think it applies to atheists. For you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Everybody together? And my soul knows. knows it very well. I've talked to a lot of atheists. They know God exists. They're just mad at God or don't want to listen to God. Yes? That little 12-week-old hand has fingernails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes? I just want to point out that an atheist is the most abortion safe place. Yeah. And it went? Important. Important. Yeah, they, it's it's when most abortions take place. Yeah. Yeah. This lesson, I'm pro-life. I'm not going to talk about that, but you, you can see it's obviously a living baby. Life defined as metabolism, cell division, ability to respond to stimuli. That's definitely a lot. Okay? All right, this should be easy now. Isn't that precious? This, yeah. Who, who went, oh, you can raise your hand. <laughs> This is my wife's favorite slide of the whole lesson. Isn't that precious? It's tiny little feet. Beautiful. Speaking to the wisest person on earth, just as you do not know the path of the wind and how bones are formed in the womb of the pregnant woman, so you do not know the activity of God who makes all things. God is telling Solomon, be humble. Some of you will know the answer to this. What is the only organ in the human body that is disposed of by natural means? They said, Right. The placenta. It's part of the process. I had two hours of great material on the placenta, but I don't have enough time. So maybe next year. That's a future of unbelievable, the placenta. How underrated it is. You know, oh, the baby's gone. Okay, get rid of that. Unbelievable. I'll just talk about the placenta just a little bit. Okay. The placenta receives a lot of blood from the mother. But you might know the baby's blood never comes in contact with the placenta's blood. Did you know that? The baby's blood and the mother's blood never come in contact. So they often say, you, you know, you can't tell me what to do with my body. It's not. It's not as a completely independent body relying on her for life. So anyways, the placenta receives a lot of blood from the mother. A pint a minute. That's a lot of blood. There are 20 different connections between the mother and the placenta. That's what it looks like, okay? You got 20 different connections. There's the placenta, and the blood goes into it at 20 different spots. There's only six there, but there's 20 of them. At birth, the placenta exits with the baby. You follow me? Why doesn't the mother bleed to death? You got 20 ports, a pint a minute of blood. The placenta basically is torn out. Why doesn't she bleed to death? Each of these arteries has a muscular sphincter. All 20 have a muscular sphincter around it, like that. Guess what happens at birth? It closes like a purse string. Isn't that amazing? Wow, I, I just, as I said, this is my favorite lesson. How, how can I come back next month? I retire. <laughs> Chris Russell can take over. Okay. It closes and shuts off, otherwise the mother would bleed to death. <laughs> That's design. That's just one of these alone is remarkable design, right? And I've thrown about 17 things at you already. True or false, the pelvis of the female is identical to the male. False. The female's pelvis is more open than the male's, okay? Okay. Time Magazine had an article years ago. Boys are different than girls. People remember that? It was the front page of the magazine? <laughs> These people aren't too smart, of course. But there are differences. But the pelvis is still too small for a baby's head to pass through it, unless it's a preemie. Okay? So the female has more room, but still not enough room for the head to pass through. So no babies are going to get born, right? Anybody want to take a guess what happens? It expands because special enzymes are released that partially dissolve some ligaments and three parts of a human 
or the female pelvis, allowing it to expand. What a great guy. Let's talk about birth. Yeah, my wife did the same thing. Oh, <laughs> okay. Think. When the baby's in the mother, a lot of its systems are taken care of by the placenta, but at birth, its functions have to take over almost immediately or else it would die. There's liquid in the lungs and they're collapsed lungs. The baby has to start breathing on its own or else it's in huge trouble. When the baby is in the womb, it practices breathing. It doesn't need to when it's in the womb, but it's exercising and strengthening its muscles for the moment of birth. The baby has to have lung function, liver function, kidney functions, and many more immediately upon birth. How many people have heard of holes in the heart? Okay, I'm going to talk about that real quickly. When the baby is in the womb, most blood does not have to go to the lung because it doesn't get oxygen uh, from the blood. It gets the oxygen from the mother and the placenta, okay? So most blood bypasses just enough blood for the lung to develop goes to the lung. See the tiny little skinny line? Well, at birth, a valve closes. We're going to show you a picture of that valve. And again, this is a very simple diagram. A, a certain valve closes, and now all the blood goes to the lungs. The hole in the heart is if this valve doesn't close all the way, okay? It should close all the way so that all the blood is going to the lungs, so it'll be oxygenated. If it bypasses, the blood isn't being oxygenated, and it's uh, not doing its job. That's what it looks like. Those are two thumbs, a tiny little hole in the heart. That's a valve that you have in your heart that closed at birth. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. Aren't we in great hands? Okay. Heckel's embryos, touch on this real quick. How many people have seen this in current biology books? It is still in the current biology books. All these drawings that say, oh, look at how similar uh, all the embryos are. <coughs> Anybody know the response to this? Fake. It's fake. They're frauds. This is what they really look like. Completely different. Heckel, Ernst Heckel, who produced this, was convicted of academic fraud. They had a court. And they said, no, these are fake. It was in the 1800s, yet they're still what? Still in the textbooks today. Academic fraud being taught in the school. Yes? I've seen newer ones uh, that uh, they aren't exactly like Heckel. So people will reproduce the drawings, update them, make them look a little more different, but they're not, um, they're not accurate. Though I have also seen one with accurate pictures. <coughs> well, there are significant differences, as you can see, the fish, salamander, turtle, chicken. Very, very different. But Heckel loved Darwin and his teaching, and he came up with his drawings and was busted for it. Now, they often teach, oh, look at the embryo, it had gill splints, a yolk sac, and a tail. You know, like tails like from an ape, the yolk sac is like our chicken relatives, and gill slits like a bird. I'm going to go quick because of time. Well, it's not a gill slit. First off, it's not a gill. Secondly, it's not a slit, so it's not a gill slit. It's got nothing to do uh, with respiration. So how could it be a remnant of our ancestry to a fish, okay? The yolk sac is a blood-forming sac because the baby can't make its own blood until it's got bones. And uh, that helps deliver blood uh, to the baby. And the tail, it's not a tail, it's the end of a spine. If you didn't have an end of the spine, it would be infinite, right? It's simply the end of the spine. You build a house, you build the frame first. That's what God did with the babies. And it's not a tail, it's just the end of the spine. Now, I was at Marina High School once, and somebody said, oh, we don't need the end of our spine. The cossack is a vestigial organ. I stole this from Kent Hovind. I said, you don't think you need your cossacks? He says, no, we don't. I said, I'll give you $5,000 to have yours removed. $5,000 cash. Do you want it? He said, you don't need it. I said, well, first off, nobody would remove it because seven vital muscles attached to your cossacks. You remove it, your guts won't be held up. Your guts do not stay in place by blind faith. There's muscles that keep it in place. You wouldn't be able to control your bowels without that because of the muscles. So you'd have to spend all that $5,000 on diapers. You'd never get a date. And your sexual organs attach muscles to that. So is that a vestigial organ? No. Many muscles attached to it. 
Isaiah 42, I am the Lord, that is my name, I will not give my glory to another. Message for my atheist friends. I really hope to send a lot of these DVDs to uh, atheist people. And I say this politely to you. I used to be an atheist and I thought science contradicted the existence of God. Anybody else here? I never hated God. I just thought it was a ridiculous belief and it fit the lifestyle I wanted to lead as well. But I did know in my heart God existed. Because when I choked on a fishbone, I prayed. Don't let me die. Don't let me die. <laughs> so that's my little history there. When I was an atheist, I never considered design versus chance. I just took what they taught me and moved on and tried to get good grades. And when I was 26, I finally looked into design arguments to see if they made sense or not. And I'd say to the atheist, it's for your sake. Dwell on the points in this lesson. And you conclude and ask yourself, is this the result of power, intelligence, and greatness? Or did it happen by chance over time? Atheist, ask yourself that question. And the answer is what? The most important answer in life. The most important question in the Bible is Jesus asking, who do you say that I am? Amen? And again, creation is wonderful. Satan is a creationist, right? I like to say Satan is a young earth creationist who believes the Bible is the word of God and Jesus died for your sins. All of this stuff is meaningless if it doesn't result in a relationship between you and the creator of the universe. Amen? Okay. It's about seeking truth. It's not about religion at all. The end. I'd like to close in prayer. Father, thank you for this time. Words can't explain how great you are, Lord. And it's shown through the creation. And we just pray for people to seek you for a saving relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you.